I feel I, I'm having a premonition. Mm-hmm. I feel like something's gonna come out of one of us on this for some reason. <laughs> some revelation. So, something for a, a blackmail folder. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. I'm Richard. Hey, uh, I'll call you back. S- sorry, okay. um, uh, I'm on the phone. That was Slim Shady. <laughs> His real name is Marshall Mathers, but you probably know him as Eminem. He's the biggest selling artist of the past decade, earning 13 Grammys, one Oscar, and mountains of criticism for lyrics that are as profane as they are poetic. Whether you're a fan of rap or not, Eminem's life story is an extraordinary tale of success against all odds. You just was calling me to say hello. I'll, I'll call you back later, Slim. Hey, I'm Steven. Welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. And today we're just freestyling a little bit, and then we're going to speak ill of that old dirty Pope. But yeah, that you absolutely got me. You know, he calls me from time to time, and I thought I'd just get his <laughs> voice in there a little bit, you know. They think he's uh, thinking of moving on, you know, uh, um, stepping up his game, his producer game. He never quite learned his mother's spaghetti recipe and he's really just been dialing in on that you know it's the uh Getting you know focused. he's been perfecting it he's got that restaurant down here in detroit yeah one shot you got motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> it's what what's up we 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 have this episode for mk ultra we've been procrastinating because we've been very busy sleepy little beavers and uh both weren't really feeling this week so we're gonna try our best and and I think, you know, every once in a while freestyle conversations, you stumble into something, even when you're not feeling it, that, I don't know, feels important at the time. So, we're just going to yeah. see what happens. How's your week been, man? Um, it's been a week. You know, depression's a hell of a drug. Mm. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm moving through it. What Ta- flavor? Time is moving around me. Not, not, what, not what flavor. What color? Like our episodes, the number, you know? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what flavor is the depression this week? Um, it's um, give it a color, nice hue, like a like a like a light magenta. Oh, that is sad. I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's got magenta, magenta depression this week. That's all bad. Yeah. Um. I think I think last week it was more like a lime green. Mm. Um, which together they kind of look cool, but like next to each other, but like like Jolly Ranchers, but like like a clown puked on your shoes right as you got out. Of the- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. <laughs> it looks really pretty. It looks like Jolly Ranchers, and you t- taste it, and it's like, oh, this is just this clown puke. <laughs> bad. <laughs> it's one of those uh, those bad flavor jelly beans. <sighs> those are the worst. But other than that, I'm you know I'm working. I'm doing. I'm working through it. Yeah, uh, how, how about you? I I'm okay. I've been staying very busy. I I'm just kind of kind of frust I'm frustrated. I really don't feel like my depression when it's heavy is super severe. And I, I don't really feel that right now, but I feel very frustrated. And I'm known to get squirrely when I get frustrated. So, yes, so you're you're, you're frustrated a lot. I'm just a very frustrated person. <laughs> just angry at the world. <laughs> yeah, man. But but I'm I feel like I'm in part so frustrated lately because I'm not I'm not allowing myself or having the opportunity to get to unleash some anger. You unleash know, unleash the beast. Yeah, dude. I got a, a caged hyena in my belly. I'm just waiting to unlock. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I believe it. I'm trying to go sicko mode on some <laughs> on some <laughs> some family of pedestrians, you know? Just <laughs> there's a there's a guy, I think I mentioned him before on the podcast, but there's a a dude that just I don't know where the fuck he lives. I don't know if he lives out the, out there, but like there's a dude that just is always outside the seven eleven around the corner from me. And the first few times I went there, like he's very friendly, which, you know, when you're, when you live in a big city, when you grow up with that, like that's not the, the way to approach people. 
Oh, is like, I get, you I know, get. like when, when someone comes up and they're like, hey, big man, how you doing? Like there's like, yeah, a, it's like you're out of nowhere. It's like set me up to get robbed. You want things I have. You're going to try to talk me out of my fucking shoes if I let you. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's something like don't don't come at me with that. Like we're not like we're not cool. I don't know you. It, there's too much skepticism. Anyways, like he. um, Damn, I forget how I even got started talking about him. You're just um, hating on homeless people. <laughs> you just brought it up out of nowhere. It was super random, but oh no! But no, no, no. The, what it was was, uh, you know, like he's <laughs> you're talking about really going off on a, on a on a you know a family of a bunch of people. But he, you know, he'll just like come out and start talking to people, and like he's a, he's always been like super nice in interactions, but like to a degree where I'm like skeptical. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like I saw an ad something about him on like the neighborhood app thing that was like like oh yeah like like does anyone know this guy like is he cool and the people were like oh yeah that's James man he's cool as hell like <laughs> like he's he's the chillest person ever like I always give him a couple bucks and like bring him a sandwich or a beer or something it's really it's a, just a parasite a, on the community huh yeah <laughs> just, <laughs> just survive you know. But, <laughs> It was a full comments page of everyone just like talking about how dope James was and like how chill of a dude he is and like like he was down on his luck. He was like he was doing this job for a while. I think he quit that job, but um he was dude, starting how's... something else and like he's like but he's always there. I'm like, what the fuck you mean he's got a job? Like he's always outside the seven eleven. Dude, wait way to go. You just brought up the saddest topic ever. We're... Well <laughs> Like, we have a whole class of people who survive off of the leftover scraps of other people, and there's online communities who talk about this this person's existence online, I, and like, oh, no, he's okay, we'll, we'll let him live another week. <laughs> I'll bring him a sandwich this week, maybe he'll stick around. What my, what I was trying to get to the 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 path I was trying to get to but failed but failed to do was like you know like you ever been like walking down the street and then like you had somebody just like come up and like mumble like yell up like nonsense up in your face and like of course yeah like accost you like out of nowhere like that's that's gonna be you but then <laughs> there's gonna be a whole backlog of people like oh no that's just Steven he's cool <laughs> as fuck he's. <laughs> He's chill, man. He just got to get it out of his system. <laughs> and dude, I feel like that's. I mean, all right, we're, we got to go back to this James character. I I got friends in low places, right? Mm-hmm. I, I know some real some real shit bags, but I always thought the the like the camp out and bag is like actually actually pretty disgusting. Like, I, I, and I, I'm not even mad at the person. Like, I wish them the best. I'll, I'll give them, you know, whether it's drugs, money, or so, something I got, if it's going to help somebody in a shitty position, I'll I'll try. Like, I I get that. But also, like, I, I would, when I was in low places like that, there's no fucking way I'll ever just sit there and try to rely on other people's charity. Like, it makes me feel sick to my stomach to think of myself doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, your your pride is very strong. I feel like it is and it isn't, but something like that where it's like... if Your pride and your sense of self-worth are two different things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there's there's that, um, you know, church thing, you know, God won't do for, your, do for you what you won't do for yourself. And there's something like... I, I might be able to make more money flying a sign on the corner than I'm going to make trying to the sling dope when I'm dope sick, but I'm always going to fucking risk that jail time or try to get to a some shitty job for a day than beg. I don't know, man. The begging is just, it just feels so sad. Yeah. Like just so soul. It's a, it's a very foreign concept. But like the, uh, there's different types of people that get into it. That you know, some people are really in that broke of place, and then other people, it's like they're they're just wired different, where they don't they don't register that shame the same way. And in mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of ways, that has to be so freeing because they're just like, fuck it, I can get what I want this way, and you know, I for less work, I can live the life type of lifestyle I want. Mm-hmm. And, and if if you don't have to, I don't know. 
like deal with the shame like that. It probably isn't the worst, but we had a can't, can't we had a it. dude that used to come into our um, our restaurant, and he would he would stand like in the median across from the restaurant. Like there's like a median inside of the you know, this two way like highway street kind of thing. And he, he would stand out there and, 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 uh, with a sign and he was handicapped, like for sure. Like he took the bus up there and then went back to Detroit and we talked to him a few times. Um, we got to know him that he, uh, you know, he had a place to stay, he had a roof over his head, but like he didn't have like any other source of income and that's just what he did. Uh, but it was a, actually a pretty mutually beneficial relationship because he would come in and like, he would get like coffee or like soup or something sometimes, but like he would also come in like after he, you know, collected money, uh, he would come in and like give us his small bills and his change and, you know, which we always needed. And we would give him bigger bills so he could go home with it. I, I, it was a, it would, it would suck because there are certain days where it'd be like, you know, of course the cops would come out and they're like, we, we can't have you out here. You got to pack your shit up and go home. And like to see him like that, but like, he was just a, like he, obviously, like I said, he was handicapped. Like he couldn't, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of jobs you probably couldn't do. You probably, you know, could get something, but I don't know. He was, he was definitely in a rough spot, but like just sitting there talking to him sometimes would be like. How how the fuck are communities, like how, how does a community of people exist that don't have like contingency plans for a handicapped person who doesn't have money? Like, how, how is that – do you know what I'm saying? Like, how yeah. is there not places you can go in your community if you had an injury, if you were handicapped, if you're out of a job that will work with you or help you find assistance or or give you some sort of part-time job? Like, I, I don't understand how, yeah. like, segmented our, our worlds are, you know? right. Like I, I think of myself as a pretty angry person, but if I was designing a community, I don't feel like I could come up with a more cruel way than how our communities are currently built. You know, right? You know, there's there's everyone's got something to offer, right? Like if you set up, I don't know, make it easier for people to offer shit. Now, you know, I know that's like one of the things that people talk about all the time is like you know like well it's hard you know they can't get a job because like they don't have anywhere to shower or something like that but then like look at this guy and it's like he's got a home he's got a roof over his head he's got somewhere to stay that you know he paid for i assume it was like you know either section eight housing or something like that but like he had a you know he had a, a, a home or a place to call home so he you know i i don't know yeah, I don't know. It, there's, there's all these. It's like getting. I think we've talked about this before. The main point is like getting somewhere, getting getting people not only somewhere to stay, but like it's the the mental health kind of stuff. That's like if they've been homeless for a long time and shit. Like it's, it sucks. I I we might have even talked about this on here too. I saw I was looking at a thing somewhere and it's like when when you're in that position and people like. You know, like you're you're in your car and like you don't have you know like cash or whatever, and like you're not trying to give someone a dollar today, like, and they're standing out there and you kind of like turn away and ignore them, like they're not there, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like when there's a reaction, when people you know people do that all the time to you and like pretend you're not there. There's like a, I want to say there's a specific word for it too. But, you know, like that causes like deeper mental issues of like. For sure. But do you want the you want the real black pill on this? Yeah, get it to me. So here's the thing. If you're if you're too if you're in your car, it's mm-hmm. one thing like you have to make eye contact with them. Like when mm-hmm. you see someone who like doesn't understand their plight at all and they just avoid eye contact all all together and it's like very troubling for them. Like, that's, that's a shitty thing to do. Like, you just look them in the eye like a normal person. Even if you're not going to give them shit, you, like, nod. You, like, right. make the human connection. Like, hey, dude, I, I acknowledge that's it. Yeah, exactly. But, so, th- th- that's what you're supposed to do. And honestly, that can be hard some days because it is a difficult position to be in. 
when someone who doesn't have the bare minimums is looking at you comfortable in a warm car. Like that right. is a hard position to be in. But the, the real black pill is that they are simultaneously doing a very shitty thing in a way because just like it's shitty for the person to avoid eye contact with them, to not acknowledge them, to not like recognize their existence, it is also shitty to make people feel that way all day Mm -hmm. unless unless you have to be in that position that sound i i feel like the words coming out of my mouth are like i feel like i could hear them from someone that if i was listening to i would really really hate i i i hear what you're saying because i i was i was actually just thinking the same thing of like there are many arguments be made about against that and i I'm coming off hot, but you're, co- you're, com- you're coming off hot, but I, I, I don't 100% disagree with you because it's bro. Cause there's, there's, it's not, it's not everyone, but there, there are people that stand out there entitled, like you should feel shitty and ashamed for not giving me your shit. Like, look, look how fucked up I am. You should be giving me shit. And I, I get that could be, you know, you could easily say it's like a reflection of myself that I'm projecting, whatever. But there, there, there are elements of truth to this. Like mm-hmm. we all have expectations for the people around us in our, in our daily lives, and I, I don't know. It's it, you're you're at the very least, it's asking a lot of other people, and yeah. I, I, and I think we should be more willing to do those things to begin with. But in like in the free for all in in the concrete jungle of the city, baby, it, it is a it's a it's a big ask, you know. Yeah, that's. I mean, again, what that really boils down to then is like the, you know, there's not. I don't know. You 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 have to look at like the reason behind stuff, right? So like, if if something upsets you and bothers you that someone does, you have to go back and look at like the source of the issue. And it's not, and and of course there, there's always the, um, you know, the argument, like people make choice, people make their choices to do whatever they want. Even if you're, even if you're, you know, starving and whatever, like that doesn't mean you have to get out on the street and, and ask for money like that. That is a choice that you're making to do that. But what is the thing that is, um, making making that choice have to be made like when you don't have systems in place that make it easier for people without that that becomes a more viable option or that becomes the most viable option of survival yeah and and I'll man i've become like a recluse like i I don't i literally haven't had the sun on my skin in a week week and a half vampire style yeah and i you know didn't used to be that way but i on some real shit like part of the reason i do get angry and like seeing people like that is because like when i and when i drive past people like that on the corner and shit like I feel deeply upset and, and angry because I know, like, I know the reality is it, it would not take that much for me to be in that same position. And, mm-hmm. and that's like, that infuriates me. Like, I, I and it, it makes me sad, you know? Like, I, I, I feel for people a lot because I, because I've had experiences that, make me aware that there should be empathy there but whether it's angry at myself or angry at the community at the world whatever like it it does it it, there there is something that makes me very angry about it because it's just so fucking sad let let me ask you this and and this might this also is something that might come off in a in a hot take kind of way um for me personally, and th- this might be similar to you, but the the thing that I think is, and, and I'm not 100% positive, but I think the thing that really 
the reason that it makes me upset to see, like, besides the fact that, like, I know there are homeless people and, and, and it sucks, or people that have less and it sucks to, to, to think about that in general, but, like, when you're confronted with it and faced with it, the thing that makes it such a triggering thing for me is that it makes it harder for me to enjoy the success that I've created for myself. It makes me feel guilt. Yeah, that feels bad, man, to hear. Like, that, 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 that's a... That's a hard line. Because, because as you know, like I'm not that I'm wildly successful, you know, I've, I do well for myself, you know, and I, I have. God, is this I, how I sound when I'm saying crazy shit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I, I understand what, 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 what you mean, but it sounds. What, 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 what I'm getting at is more that like, I feel like. I work hard. I feel like I've worked hard for my entire working life. And then when I see someone who doesn't and I realize how like it's the kind of thing that makes me think like, oh, I should be giving back. And like I I feel like I do. I used to a lot more. But but isn't like that, isn't that always the thing? Like you have Friends, family members, like the people that work really hard always look down on the people that don't work hard, as hard, even if they're mm. working crazy hours too. The people that make a ton of money feel like the people that aren't making enough money, as much money, aren't, aren't as good. Like there's something we, we tie our esteem into our work and status so much, even if even if we know there's not like a... Well, substantial reasoning there it, it it's hard not to feel some of those things i can see that's that's there too sometimes what really strikes more for me is it's like i feel like i feel like the weight of responsibility is on me more than it needs to be you've you've always like been that way like it's like the weight of responsibility to help others is more on me than it needs to be because it seems like no one else is doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, people, people that have way more than me, like people, uh, industries, whatever that have way more than me and could, uh, you know, do a lot more to affect a change than I can like a wide sweeping, helpful change than I can. The responsibility should, you know, if it's going to fall anywhere, because they should are. fall with people that have ability to affect change rather than me who's, you know, just finished a, you know, another fucking, you know, long shift at work. And then I'm, I'm just trying to drive home. I'm tired. But just because um, other people are negligent does not mean you owe responsibility. Yeah, I, right. But I feel that way. I, no, I know. I had um, a conversation it wasn't right after I got sober. It was one of those things where, you know, people want to wait till you're, you know, more on your, your feet again type of shit. Right. And it was a conversation like uh, their feelings are valid. Like to feel mm -hmm. let down that someone's not around. Like th those emotions, feelings are valid. But th the the stance they took was like I I did something – bad by not being what they wanted me to be right oh, that sucks yeah and uh i i feel like every aa program or like every fucking recovery bullshit piece of shit thing is like you know make those amends you, you weren't there you weren't enough like you know, all that shit and, and i think the reality is like we don't know anyone anything like ever right like yeah. unless we want to owe someone something I, I just anyone that makes you feel indebted or uh you know that someone's very existence makes you feel like you owe it to them to help them like just because other people are failing them whose jobs it is to do like yeah I understand what you mean, though. It's even, all, we're talking not, feelings. Even not, even not, even not, like, just helping them, but, like, if you, you're made to feel guilty by, because you don't meet their expectations. 
What's like the, in some way, like that's trauma Olympics. Like you know, if who, if, especially online, it's like if if you don't have uh, enough trauma to put in the chat, like you don't, you know, you don't deserve the people's time or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, when people yeah. compete who's been through the the worst shit. Like, um, I don't know. It, 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 it just, I just feel like. Um, at least for myself, I, it, I I always feel like it's a worthwhile, I'll put it that way, it's a worthwhile reminder to, to like remind myself it's, that I don't know anyone anything. And like, mm-hmm. I, I, I've been, so we had our interview, we'll, we'll spin this way, we'll spin, I, got, I got an angle. Uh, we had our conversation with Chaotic last week, Chaotic Steel, such a fun conversation and uh, congrats him and his girlfriend by the way they just had their their little baby onyx steel like two, Fuck yeah it was like two days or a day after our interview so so exciting so when he blows up we got the interview right before he had his his first Fuck child yeah. Yeah. chaotic's gonna put us on the map <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> but uh you know one of his standpoints on god was that you know we're all one we're all of the same being con- whatever it is we're you know, in it together. And in re- editing that conversation, I kept thinking just that I, that concept, right? Mm-hmm. I don't feel like that is a version of what people call God, but I understand how it could be. And I, I kept revisiting that, and it felt identical to me as your concept of all being in the same hallway where my view has always been we are all in our own separate hallways even if we're in the same building Mm -hmm. our hallways are not connected right um yeah no i I can i can see the parallels there that that absolutely tracks i mean it's to me it feels like i get there's like unique individual like aesthetics of it but to me it feels like the exact same root element that we're all in this journey together yeah we're all we're on the same planet we all get the same we all have the same you know social media feeds we all see the same bullshit we all have i just you know i I keep revisiting that and i i just do not feel that at all like i i can't identify with that feeling at all and i i think that's why like you know i'm joking but i i really feel like there there's a part of me that like i keep away and play play nice with soft people all day but there's like part of me that just feels like a, a separate animal from from everybody else in the in their hallways you know what i mean like yeah I, I can't feel that connected thing. I can feel it like artificially for a little while with the, the right substance or whatever, but it's not, I don't, I don't understand that feeling. And I, I find it interesting or, or it's becoming progressively interesting to me that there's more people I respect that have, that have that element of an idea. Let, let me let me ask you this. Do you do you not want to be in the combined hallway? Would you do you let me let me split that into two questions. I feel like you feel more comfortable in your hallway knowing that you're the only one there. Is that true? I I think so. I think when I was younger uh, where, where your first question was headed? I think when I was younger, like the uh, the rebellion or the like wanting to be different or whatever, there could be truth to that too. But I think now, to your point, I feel way more comfortable on my own than I ever would in any room of people. So, do you think that? Do you think that um, 
is there something holding you back from embracing the idea of the full hallway concept? But on some real shit, like, uh, I, I could even see in the past it used to be anxiety, but I could see there being like a fear element. I, I, that's that's what I was gonna get to next. Of like, do you feel like self protection? Like people hurt yeah, you. Like I right. don't, I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be in a room with a bunch of people that want to judge me or pick me apart or let me down or like fail me. Like I. It's much more comfortable to be to know that you're on the outside looking in. Yeah, and um, I, I can stalk my prey. I can yeah fantasize about what I'm going to steal from their house or how I'm going to fuck <laughs> them over, like how you, I take you their can, money. Like you can watch them be hooligans from afar, knowing that. Yeah, make a podcast you know, about it. Yeah, make a podcast about it, knowing that they you know that they can't touch you. Yeah. In here kind of thing. Dude, a hundred percent. Like I, I very much I really get that there's like weird like trauma elements or like people like social shit or people shit. I don't know. But I just I don't but it's not like I just have that reaction and I feel like I'm missing. Like I I feel like I feel that way in part because I've never felt that connection. The same mm-hmm. way, like I can form, I can form those bonds with people. Like I, I feel a connection with you, feel a connection with Sarah, Sam, my brother. Like I, I feel those connections with like my close friends, and like I find myself being a lot more social than I think I'm being. Like I, I kind of right. weirdly talk to like a lot of people, for especially for not like being out in the world. Like I have conversations with people, like ongoing every day and and i can feel that connection with that that one person but even if all those people were together in one room it it dies like i could i can keep it up like i I could be at that uh that imaginary party of all the closest people and i could feel the connection in a conversation but I would never feel comfortable in that room with everyone there at the same time. Mm -hmm. And like, if I'm close to someone and we don't talk for a week, I, I realize there's still like a bond, a connection, whatever. Right. Like it, it, I'm not delusional, (laughs) but but there's part of me that like, even if I'm capable of realizing it's just, chemical depression or whatever the fuck is going on with my brain there's part of me that feels like hey i know i love that person i'll do anything i possibly could to help them but right Mm -hmm. now i don't i don't give a fuck about anyone on my phone like i and normally it's like i get that a text from someone i just feel frustrated angry and then like you know, I read far enough in it, something makes me laugh or whatever, and I, I can like re spark it. You know what I mean? Where I'm, I, it's yeah, not, it's not like I don't know it's there, but I can't, I don't, I don't feel it easily. No, I, 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 I actually, I kind of, I recognize that feeling probably you more than, too. yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I, I, and especially like the, you said, you know, like when you're in a group of people, like I, I invite, I, I like hosting people over i I like we've had a couple like we had a halloween party and like last year we did like a super bowl party thing that i'm considering doing again like i don't fucking care about football but it was it's human meat guys he just does this so he can feed you yeah yep (laughs) (laughs) uh, (laughs) this is just a long play for your hannibal (laughs) yeah (laughs) um the i like the the idea of doing that that being said like there is a whole set of anxiety that comes over. And I think part of the reason I enjoy having people over is, is hoping, thinking that I'm, I'm getting, I'm working through that anxiety of like having all kinds of people like around me that, you know, like 
the 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 harder one that I've recently been working on trying to get over is like, and this is always uncomfortable. This is uncomfortable uncomfortable for everyone involved when you invite like one of your friends over, and then you also have like friends Gee, from a friend. dip, yeah, yeah. <laughs> friend from a different part of your life over. Like a I have second like, tier friend, but yeah, you know, the first yeah, those B yeah. tier. Yeah, they they don't really they don't know each other at all, but you introduce them, and then like, so what do you think about them? <laughs> but um. The whole the, – that, that whole thing of, like, intermixing, like, you know, like, I had my work friends over and then I had a couple of, like, people from outside of that. You got to keep them separated. Over. You got to compartmentalize relationships. Yeah, you know, but then I wouldn't have – you know, we wouldn't have a party. It would just be having some people over. Um, yeah. And that feels weirder to me, actually. Um, the there, one-on-one. There are, yeah, yeah. No, well, not even one-on-one, but, like, having – Having like one or like a couple friends over, it feels like I don't know. Like my I I, I didn't do it much, um, you know, since like growing up, like since high school, I haven't like had a lot of that. Or well, like college, I guess too, we did that too. But I don't know. It, it feels almost childish. Like I, it is know. that is. I mean, I I get that because if it's someone. Like me and you would never have a problem with that, and it might right, even exactly. feel awkward like it, for like a minute or two, though, too. Like, but it would be no, it's, yeah. But even like I think about that with like I go over to Keith's house, and it doesn't feel weird at all to me to no. like go over there and hang out, and like. But also, it's not just me and Keith. It's like me and Keith yeah. and his wife and his girls. But but it has to for me. Like Sarah and I will do things with Megan or Sam together, like now and again, and it might feel awkward for a sec. And I know Sarah. She just struggles with anxiety, so she always feels that, regardless of who it is. And, it, you know, once she relaxes, then it's chill. For me, I always feel super comfortable with them. I love you guys. But in general, for me, it it's about doing something. Like, if we're chilling, like, I link up with you or Sam or John, as long as I'm working on what I want to work on, we don't need to talk. I just want to work yeah. in the same environment. Like I, I want to be in a like a energy bubble with other people doing what they want to do. I don't want to collab on an art project, but I want to work in the same room with someone. Right. The best yeah. feeling in the world to me is working on my art while John makes music. Because it, 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 there's something about writing music where it's repetitive, it's this trance, it like builds and evolves, and it, it is the, the perfect way for me to work on art. We used to do that over Skype. Yeah. Of like, yeah, that was that was fun. I was just, He's just been gonna... doing it on Discord. We should just hop on on those more. I've been doing that with them. We'll 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 get us all in. That'll probably actually um fuel me to start drawing more. Yeah, dude. Yeah, doing, he's, doing he's working again. on something. I, I feel like I got to be held accountable. Out, excuse me, held accountable to it. I think once I get started on something, I'm like I can invest hours into it. But we, like, we, it's just we, taking the first step to get. We need started to just on something. I've been calling you out on that for a while. We should I know. Revisit. Yeah, we we fair. should just start a, a fuck Halo night and switch switch it up with a Discord art night. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, the only way to like stay connected and to, to doing that shit is like to yeah. have sit, shit consistently scheduled or it just falls by the wayside. I feel like this is a this is a, a weird shout out. I was gonna say shout out to my ex girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that we had it was the first time because I had tried to do that with a different ex and like they would just want to talk and like they Wait, would get tried to do th- what. Uh, like do art, the like, kind of shit, and just like, be in the together? same room, and yeah, and be quiet, oh, and yeah. like just kind of like exist in the same room and do different shit. Yeah, and um, because it it is it's comfort it's comforting knowing that someone that you care about's there. You know, it's nice to be able to like occasionally be like, hey, what do you think of this, or like, what do you think of this idea, or something like that, and like, you know, you can, you can kind of throw that out, or you can just kind of you know chill, listen to some music and vibe kind of thing. I tried to do that with uh, a different ex girlfriend, and, and they were like. They just kept asking me different questions about shit, kept changing the subject, and then they got bored. And it was like, ugh, it's like, I can't, I'm not getting anything done. Like, we're talking about shit, we're like, whatever, back and forth. I'm not, I'm not focused on my work, but my uh, more recent relationship was exactly, we, we were able to do that all the time of like, you know, even if they weren't like drawing or working on something, they were like reading a book. That's it was just, 
I, the comforting feeling of like knowing that you got, you know, someone, someone that you care about is hanging out with you and you don't have to say shit. You can focus on art and it's, you're still doing something together. It's, it's, I don't know. It feels good. I feel like that's the only, I mean, for myself, certainly, but I, I feel like probably for you too, it's the only way you could have a successful relationship. It's right. A hundred percent. Like a, a super needy person or, or someone who wants to be overly involved in in what you do, it makes it too hard. Like it has to, I, I'm, I feel very lucky in this relationship with Sarah. She's very self-contained. Like she, she honestly could give a fuck what I'm doing. You know, like she, she right. very supportive, likes the things I do, but she doesn't give a shit. She's, she's doing her thing. Like, but that's fine. Like we're in the same room or she's doing her own thing. And like, we can just enjoy being around each other while doing the things we care about. Like we don't have to have the same passion, but if we can just, I don't know, coexist in, in that it's, it just is a night and day thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, you said, you know, it's what you need for a successful, successful relationship. And while I wouldn't have called that uh, relationship successful since it ended, it was a healthy one. Sure. So there's, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, it took me a while to real. I need to be like left alone. So yeah, exactly. Relationship. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's one of my hesitancies to, you know, start one is is knowing that how much time i feel like i need to myself feels you're a hermit man at the I, moment. I am it feels selfish it feels like like there are many times during my you know afternoons or my evenings if i'm not working and i'm just chilling at home of like it would be cool to have someone else here but like i'm um, like i would be would I be as comfortable? Like, definitely not like, you know, first few months of dating status. I just, like, I don't you know? believe you, though. <laughs> We've talked about that. I just don't really believe you. Like, I wonder if you're, like, way more depressively inclinated than you think you are. Because there is no fuck, like, I, I'm such, like, I need so much solitude in time alone too but there's no way not having someone around feels like like it doesn't move the needle for you as much mm. like it, I, I just think even like i just i feel, sex, I feel like, like when yeah human that's, connection. that's the other one that's the uh, that's the biggest probably the motivating factor <laughs> but the thing is is but, like that gets written off as just like horniness or just like a, a sexual thing but like it, it to me it, that is like the the most sincere human connection and it, no, it isn't I, that I, way I, for everyone but i know i i agree with you i i see it that way as well like just the, that element that like i don't know that those even if it's not all the time I, but those moments of serious you know human connection not being there here's here's the pattern i've experienced in my life and and this it, i think this is um it's it's still true but like in the You're past a like rifle oh <laughs> uh, sure we can go with that <laughs> I, I mean it's it's a kind back. of what i was so so when i when i'm with somebody like i go all in i'm i'm i was just having this conversation with someone earlier of like i i am I am all into a relationship. I, I really, I, I don't mind. I think, you know, monogamy is cool. I like putting, I, my, I, the way I always tried to phrase it before, the way I tried to phrase it to someone else before was like, my time is very important to me. I, a lot of my life is based around my career. Mm -hmm. um, I do value that a lot. So I don't, I'm not used to having a lot of free time when I have it. I want to have, someone it was just one person that i can focus on and spend time with like i i want that i want a deep committed relationship kind of setup but what happens when they die 
Well, then I'm fucked. And then I, you know, I go get the euthanasia. I'm being um, uh, devil's advocate. But the third. Well, well hold on, hold on. Let, let, me, let me finish what, when I finish what I'm saying. So, like, when, but that being said, when I'm when I'm in a relationship, I'm in it, and I I recognize how happy I am in a relationship, and how how you know how important that is to me in that moment. Mm. The like I don't say the minute I'm out, but like <laughs> when I'm by myself, when I I know I'm very comfortable. I am very very comfortable in being alone. See, but I want to, to be alone, probably to bit. a point of fault. Yeah, and I, but I think you're the same way. Like, I want to be alone while someone else is in the house. I want to be yeah. alone in an empty house. Yeah. No, I feel that. It's. I mean that that does come up, but it's not. It's probably not as much as you would imagine. Like, it's not. Uh, I do believe you because you're you're how you are with communicating with like you can i i know how you are you can time can pass you're pretty self you're more self-contained than i think i've known many people to be yeah i i've never i've never thought about it like that but yeah i can see yeah that that tracks what do you think you would feel like if you didn't value your job as much because i i feel like oh, i don't know i feel like you overvalue it um, probably. I mean, it's, 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 it's one of those, right now, so. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. It's, it is one of those, like, what that reminds me of is, um, do you ever hear the thing of like, everybody's a nine tens are like for personal preference kind of thing Yeah, yeah. of like, so like where the, you know what I can what what people consider like valuing their job. Most people probably put it at a nine, but because I I, I put it at a ten because it's uh, because I enjoy it because I I personally value it more than most people will. But I get I get enjoyment from it that most people don't get from their job. See, but I see, and you you may fully agree. I see overvaluation or just the preference on um, a job as uh, the, the importance being placed on what you did and not what you made. Mm, but what if my job is consists of making things? Uh, I would argue in this scenario, the things you're making are, are temporary. Not that, you know, anything is forever. But they're they're meant to be experienced and not coveted. I disagree. I feel like the idea that um, the ex- the experience then is meant to be coveted. Yeah, I I feel like if, pe- uh, if experience people, has a short half life. If people and I feel like in a in a. Um, a business setting when you are trying to make money on something that's ideal what you have to sell is both coveted and the experience is short lived so people have to keep coming back for more it's different if they can buy something from you and then they have it forever if they have to keep coming back to you if you want to make a living on it you but want them to come back more to me that sounds like a business seminar like oh well, a- yeah man it's um, we're talking about work <laughs> Uh, makes me feel uh what you're saying is you don't see i see no value you, you don't see the it. food i make is art no Where i i do, I do in I, my head i do but i I'll, I'll, i guess if i'm being full honesty mode i've seen the things you do i've mm. tasted things you've made i know i know what you do as like tremendous value like you can do beautiful things but i would argue that while you've learned all those things Mm -hmm. from your career i don't know i don't i don't really think the job part of it is on the daily enacting the art part that's no, not a criticism. I, no, I just, that, 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 no, that's fair to say. That's fair to say. I Because I, I agree with you that. I think that the, the larger part of the job is still, 
you know, it's um on days where I'm doing prep and shit like that, like I'm it's my it's like training. It's like doodling. It's like finding something that, you know, like fucking around in your sketchbook kind of thing until you start something. It's keeping the blade new. sharp. It's, it's uh, you know, research and development. You know, you're playing with new tools, you're playing with new media. Sure. Um, but but I would argue and into my I'll I can mirror the same criticism at myself. Like I've settled for working a job that is not something I give a fuck about at all. And it is yeah. t- taking up um, the biggest amount of time away from my life from me doing the things I truly care about. So I'm not like, uh, this is a problem I have as well. It, it, you know, you could, one could argue that even as, you know, an artistic person, you put a lot of value on just on, on, on creating final product pieces. Like that is, yeah, borderline cool. obsession for you like no I, I would say it's because it's not even an obsession it's a need yeah that you have compulsion yeah where someone you know others would value like where you place your values doesn't match with theirs you know it's it's one of those like you can it's perspective it's all about perspective it's it's i think you get but don't you I'm, think experience has a short life short half-life like the things we do easily forgotten we mm. easily forget what it felt like Depends a couple on days the a week like, right do you, do you like what do you um and you remember experience. your first roller coaster no no oh, that sucks for you <laughs> i don't I, maybe I, maybe it could be i don't value a, my yeah you don't value your experience as much it could be part of it. I know I've met like pretty severe memory sh- issues too, but I th- think in general, everyone shit fades. It changes. Like I, I don't. I'll, I'll like, tell you can, for for can, absolute sure. Experiences stick with me way more than like visual representations of like That's visual things, even like smells things. Like when I think of. I got, I got the debate. I got, I got. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say what's right or wrong. We're probably looking at it differently. What would you value more? The one of the best meals you've ever had on a table in front of you. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what you wanted, or the most beautiful sculpture ever made of that same dish. Hmm. And let's for argument's sake, let's say you really did like the sculpture. It wasn't like stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Well there are varying factors here. Okay, well let's get to the root of it. We'll 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 burn through your straw man in no time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I mean is it, the the meal is just one for me. It's just for me. There's no one else, none of my yeah. no okay, well. Sure, and if you if you need to make it a collective shared experience, we'll have a whole no table no 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 no. Whatever no, no. You want. I'm, I'm I'm just checking your hypothetical. I'm down with that. Um, <laughs> but whatever. I mean, it really wouldn't matter. Whatever, however you want to do. It. I mean, we have shared experiences. We go to the amusement park with people, and it makes it more special. Um, honestly, I, I I'm not. I I considered it thoroughly. I'm not just saying this because it sides with the opinion that I have previously stated I would take the I would take the dinner I would take the the experience I, I Be, do believe but, you cuz I I absolutely look at but don't, sculptures art things like that is like something that's just it's taking up space after time like I love I like you know uh, wall art kind of stuff because I can hang it up. It's not on the floor. It's not on a table. It's not taking up that much space. I love that for that reason. You know, like you could say like a, okay. a sculpture uh, uh, or a picture or something too. Like we can just say a piece of fine art. You're so you're and tricky. Still, you're so tr- all right. This I don't is know. all right. We'll do it this way. You're the, at the, the reason. Park. The reason I have art hanging on my walls at my house is you're too literal. It's, it's like. It's like seven to it's like seven percent or seventy percent like because my friend Steven made them, you know, thirty percent that I like them. Like I definitely like the I pieces, understand. but that's not like there are plenty of pieces that I you know, pictures and shit I like. I don't that have you don't them on have my on walls. your walls. Exactly. No, I, I fully understand. All right, here here's the hypothetical. Amusement park with imaginary girlfriend, it's awesome. 
uh, you get your picture, perfect date. You're you're married for ten years after that. She dies. She right. deserts you. She just gone. Leaves you on your own. Uh, she, yeah, she just abandons you. She has the fucking nerve to die of cancer. Given that. Jeez. yeah, so I I had to go to so the, self. I have all these. <laughs> now I have all these medical bills. I gotta pay now. <laughs> now you have thousands of memories with her, right? Mm-hmm. This isn't. This one time at the roller coaster, granted, amazing day, but you have all kinds of other cheap memories with her, right? Yeah, yeah. Would you rather have? Would you rather have the memory of that day, ten years apart, very fuzzy? It's not, you know, the half life short. You know, you don't remember it that great. You got these really nice glimpses and moments. You might be able to access occasionally when you smell the right burning uh-huh, hot dog uh-huh, uh-huh. or would you rather have a really nice photo of you that day but you don't really get a feel or access that day's memories anymore you just get the photo and oh, I, the memories absolutely i can't understand that that's weird to me that's very weird it does sound I, weird in this situation because a photo is just to help you i mean in a way uh, yeah it's, it's to help you remember e- even if you were to, to like not take like you you have the picture for like, either like you say you lose the picture and like i was like you're gonna say like you lose the picture and like how upset are you and it's like i'm a, i mean a little bit but like whatever it's i just want the aesthetic I, you, of having you can't, memories you can't take a yeah <laughs> I don't need the memories. I just want the picture. I just want people to think I like memories. I think I have memories. Either way, I'm um, not remembering it. I just yeah, want I'm the not remembering shit. The the idea. I think it's. I think you know. That's. I mean, we've talked about this before too. The reason I fear uh, dementia, like Alzheimer's shit, like the reason that strikes me so much is like you can't. That's the one thing that like you feel like people can't take from you is your memories. Even if even if what you're remembering is misconstrued from the original memory, the memory that you make of that, if it's a good memory, you still it brings you good feelings. It brings you happiness in a way that and like a picture would helps you to remember that memory, but like if I lost the picture, then I still have the memory. See, I feel like maybe I still have the emotions that I feel. I feel like maybe it's a thing when you lose enough memories, you start not to trust them so much because I don't, I don't trust my memory for shit, but I do trust my feelings. Does Mm -hmm. that make any sense? Like if I don't remember, right, I can realistically, there probably are a hundred dates I've been on that I don't remember at all. Like at all. Like I would. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I would know how I felt with that person at that time in my life. Right. And I, I do feel like that's in a lot of ways more important, especially, especially if you look at it from like, um, like a storage kind of standpoint of like, you'll need to remember all, all the, the details of it. What you remember from this was that, that was a weird day or like, I, I remember like I something or like, I love this person or this person sucked or like, you know, whatever, like feel, those feelings, those emotions, those are while connected to, to memory. I feel like those are more important than the minutia of the memory itself. Absolutely. Right. Like, yeah, that's, um, it's a point I've made about, um, like Alzheimer's thing earlier too was like um we had said that there's a girl i dated when i was really young that i went over her house and her grandmother had alzheimer's and the family would just yell at her when she would like ask the same question over and over again they would get upset with her and it's like yeah i get it it can be frustrating after like a while after a long time of dealing with it it can be very frustrating but for for their grandmother all they were doing was like now she's upset and she doesn't know why. Yeah, it it's, she doesn't remember that you know she just you know you just yelled at her or why you yelled at her or why she's upset. She's just upset. If you're empathetic to the family members being mean to her, it's the most understandable thing in the world for them to be that angry and frustrated with Right. But if you're empathetic to the person, it is pretty much the cruelest thing you could do to somebody is to be to be that mean to someone who can't remember why you're doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's about it's, as shitty as it gets. Like, is, is, you know, being someone like, I, I'm very grateful that my grandmother's dementia didn't go to the point of like that she didn't recognize us. That was really important. You know, she was, it was mostly just like she had very sh- bad short term memory and she would occasionally ask if like, whatever happened to her sister, like, where's her sister at or something? And her sister's been, you know, dead for years. And it's like, you know, having to remind her of things all the time, like that, how regardless, like it did, it definitely sucked, but it could have been so much worse. And I, and I'm definitely thankful for that. Um, but, but it's still, like, it was very frustrating. Yeah. On a, you know, it was like, it made it hard to like, you know, because you got to step away from it. it. It was emotionally taxing to watch someone go through that. And like, sometimes there would be days where like, I'd want to hang out in my room instead because I didn't want to, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Like, Absolutely. I didn't, it wasn't emotional, emotionally ready to have that engagement, you know? So, so- to to that that point the the first time my grandma saw me you know she had the same thing the first time she didn't recognize who i was i just stopped seeing her and yeah. that that sounds like that sounds man uh saying it it sounds like so cruel of me i i feel like i understand let, let me ask you before you say was part of your intention, I mean, even just like a part of it, that you going over there, it was regardless, upsetting to her. It's upsetting, yeah, exactly. You're adding more confusion, yeah, and to her life. Granted, you sit down long enough, like you can get through that part of it, or maybe if you're around enough, which wouldn't have really been possible at the time, right? That you know, maybe she knows you better, but mm. it it just felt like something that. I very quickly realized this is just going to be miserable for me, miserable for her. Mm -hmm. And I see what this miserable experience does to my mom, who's taking care of her every single day. And I want to be able to try to be there for my mom because I can't be there for my grandma. And I see the effect this has on her. And I can't go through this, especially like I didn't have a super close relationship to my grandma but i do feel like part of it part i i feel like part of it of what i'm getting at too is i i i think an element of it is is my disconnection right it, mm-hmm. if i felt like i was in that same hallway walking around with my grandma i don't i don't think i would have been so willing to kind of abandon that relationship yeah and I don't, I really do feel like it wasn't going to be good for her either for me to be around. But um, if I really would have wanted to, like my other siblings worked through that. And it just, it it didn't feel like something, it didn't feel like something I, I even wanted to work through. If I'm honest, right. like I I've, no, then, don't that's- feel good about that, but that. It's that's true. fair though. It's it's because it is. It's it's a fucking lot for anyone yeah. that's gone through it. They know it's a fucking lot. It's like the most um, miserable thing. Like yeah, it's sad. It's like a fucking curse. The um, I, it's absolutely not the same. But I put it in a similar category of like that's why I I won't go to like an open casket funeral thing again. Like that the the open service thing. Like I won't. That doesn't bother me. That that does because I've only I've been to a few of them and the only thing that comes from that is now the memory I have of that person is in that box. But a lot of people think that it looks peaceful at the rest. It's, a lot of old people say that. I don't. But yeah, I no, I, I I don't. I but mean, never so, seeing them again is pretty fucking rough too. Like I don't yeah. know if it's a my I don't my know if grandma. It's my grandma wasn't so bad. Because she, so she had died of a heart attack and she went pretty peacefully, but my, my aunt that like had cancer really bad, like she did not, she, she didn't look like herself at all. Like it it was just, it was a, it's a bad memory that I now have in my head because of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, was that nobody's fault? It's just, yeah. 
did the yeah. people do a bad job or was she just in that she, her she health was, had she was, yeah she was in a really bad shape gotcha um and i think they, they did the best they could you know i'm sure but it's that, that sounds more like she just didn't look how you felt she she looked in your mind anymore yeah which is fair i mean I, yeah, yeah exactly it, it wasn't you know it wasn't my aunt sue you right. Know, that's even my my grandfather had said something about it too. He's like, Sorry. I saw a lot of people. You know, like I recognized everybody at that funeral today, uh, except one, and she was in that box. Like I didn't recognize her at all. Like that's, and it, I that, that stuck with me because it was very powerful. It, it, it was a, a way of phrasing something that I wasn't myself able to put in words at that age. Well, how, how about this? Let's take all this death. <laughs> and let's spaghetti lasso it to an earlier point. It was a joke question, but I I did mean it in earnest. We love people. We have relationships with them. They die. They abandon us. They leave us. Whatever. Well, why? But you're still, you still prefer or like monogamous relationships. And I don't, I'm not really interested in having the like monogamous first poly or whatever yeah, but yeah. but why why does it make sense for us to try to limit that love that type of connection to to one person when we know they are not going to be there for us in the end um well i guess one is you don't know yeah you do you can you can definitely make the assumption but that they're going to abandon you or you're going to abandon them <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I definitely feel like. Um, actually, I was just talking to with my poly friend earlier today. Hold up, I'm getting a phone yeah. call. Oh, is it Slim Shady? Again? Oh, hey, Slim. <laughs> oh, god damn! If I go to these lengths and these extremes, and however, if if I keep trying, it's going to turn my perseverance is going to turn me into something other than human, an animal. Uh, I am really confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'll call him back. Sorry. Uh, was he worried that uh, everyone forgot about Dre again? Yeah, we'll see what his, his voicemail says here in a bit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really wish I could leave a, a voicemail. <laughs> Just bring up a, uh, an Eminem soundboard. And <laughs> it's um, in the works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the beta version right now. We'll get um, the. Um, we we had a discussion about it because like is I've considered that as an option before of like even like open relationship like whatever like it's just it doesn't work for me because of that but like I I've the people that I know that are you know doing or that that are you know interested in that or like doing that like they it makes sense for them in my mind like knowing them it makes sense that they're like connecting that they can connect with and have that connection with multiple people and like of course it's a struggle regardless but it's like it's just a i don't know like they have they have enough to go around kind of thing they have enough of that attention that time that they want to put out there to go around and i i, I found that fascinating and that's that's why i bring it up was I, I found it very fascinating because i don't i don't have that i don't you know it's slutty enough yeah <laughs> I'm not a big whore enough. Uh, you kind of got to be I, to make I it hope, work. And I, I, I hope they listen to this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, sluts are awesome. I like. Them. Oh yeah, I who mean, doesn't? Like, who doesn't like? Who doesn't like a good slut? But that, that I mean, that really is all it is. Is like having a lot of yourself to share, which I, I don't yeah, get why people are so angry at them all the time. Like well, we that's, all. Like that's that. the one. Is like you can, and it's that's the other one. Is it's not even. It wasn't even like from a sexual perspective but like you know emotionally so yeah the emotional connections with people and it's like i i don't know like friend of having a, a handful of friends is plenty enough for me like having one close partner and a, a bunch of friends is like that's plenty i already have tr trouble like juggling spending time with those friends and shit like i can't imagine feeling a deeper commitment to them. That's, I don't know. Like that's, that's a, that's where I kind of struggle on it. Like I don't have that either t attention span or like, I don't know, but I don't know. Like I, I, what was your question? Like why, why do we, 
I don't know what. Why we, do we value relationships? Is that basically what it was? Uh, it's. A, I mean, we. It's like such a human thing to do. Like we we close ourselves off. Like we guarantee ourselves tragedy. We're we're so overly romantic and sentimental. Mm-hmm. It's like no, we got one partner. When they die, life's gonna suck. You know, like I mean, that's what that's no why backup, we get pets, right? N- yeah, but no backup plans. No, uh, no deals. <laughs> no, like. I don't know, like, you know, those special relationships where you know someone in a special point in time and you mm-hmm. might you might not see him again or know him again or you only know him in that situation. And I don't, I don't necessarily mean sexual, but it's... No, like, I, I've, I've got friends that, you know, from, like, I was just talking last week about a couple of friends from Florida that I just don't talk to anymore. Like, they're still, I consider Some myself... probably like, never will. Some, right, like, yeah. those those friendships are, like... During that time, were very important to me and very necessary. And it's like it's definitely not that I never think about them anymore. It's just that it feels weird reaching out or like I'm like busy at the time and like I just don't have a second to do it. And then the moments pass and it's whatever. But like that's that's definitely a thing where I've I've had connections with you know you've had connections with people like that and it's like in that moment extremely important right now it's it's not important anymore but it's a f- the, the fond memory of that that you know of, of having of having that connection and i think it speaks to the power of those connections that despite the heartbreak that they inevitably bring you we still seek them out we still, as a species, feel it such a necessary part of our existence. Do you think we do, or do you think it's all just like uh, biological, like psychological driving? I mean, I think that's a lot of it too, but I think that there's, I mean, I, I think that it's it's definitely a lot of that. I think there's definitely a a piece of our lizard brain that, you know, tells us we have to mate and then lay eggs and die or before we die. But it's because we, because we take it further than that as it's the, the mammalian part of our brain. That's like, you have to raise your young and teach them and, you know, have a, a life mate or, you know, that's a, there, there's a lot, you know. It's not all mammals that life made. I think, but it's, it's a lot of them. Okay, you know, you, have, having that partner. Go ahead, go ahead. Debate me, debate me. Why, why don't? How do I word this? I, I've been getting into, um, some determinism debates recently, mm-hmm. and. and it's so convenient because it, it just relieves us of any responsibility. Right? Oh yeah, that must be nice. It sounds so freeing, right? I, I I can't I can't quite punch my ticket for it, but it sounds nice. It sounds like a fun ride. Now, now, what is determinism? Just like everything's predetermined, right? That, uh, okay. Everything's yeah, yeah. everything's driven. We have there's no true free will. I hope I'm getting that right. I know what I'm talking about. I just don't know fucking words. Okay, <laughs> I'm smart for a dumb person. It's uh, it's, it's uh, wisdom versus intelligence. <laughs> sure. Why aren't we all just doing drugs, fucking each other on a beach? Mm. Like I, I don't understand what part of us is separating the lizard brain hedonistic impulses. To like want to work jobs for eight hours a day for someone else, for another little king that gives you papers to buy things. Like, mm, how, could, how, how do we go from, animal, from monkeys to, to where we are now when, when there's parts of us that, like, we all have these little pieces of us that just want pure debauchery and will we'll ruin our lives to do it. We'll cheat on our wives with a mistress. We'll lose half their fortune. We'll ruin their kids' lives. Whatever. Go to prison um, for drugs. Like we'll be still try think, to live these weird lives for other people's expectations. 
I think the short answer is pride. I think the, I mean, like, so if you think about like, what's the, the switch, the click that made, you know, that separated. That made us put um, our pants on at the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That made us put our pants on at the beach. That made us like stop fucking, you know, in the, in, at the beach to like go do something else was like, we wanted something we wanted something. We wanted an advantage over others, like right? We, like that. We that's a thing. The beach orgy to see who could buy the biggest beach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like there's so there's. So would it be? I mean, that's already that's already or? in nature too, though. Of like you know, like the the peacocking and the like fighting over a mate and shit like that. Of like who's got which ba- baboon's got the biggest red ass. Like <laughs> it's it's we don't have to just have the biggest red ass now we can go out and buy something that supplements it or we can sure. make something that supplements it so having you know it's the same part of us that that is stopping us from that stopped us from having beach orgies is the same part of us that made the iphone you know it's the same person <laughs> that made sports cars and it's the same part of our brain that you know, God, we said, fucking you don't, suck, don't we? you don't, huh. you don't just need, you know, a hut with, you know, a nice place to, to live and survive in and the things that you need, you need the thing. Now it's like, well, what do we want though? It's, it's part of the, I think that's like part of your, your Trends. predator brain too, of like your apex predator brain of like, we can afford to be slothy. We can, we can afford to be to not focus on our needs anymore. We can focus on our wants, which is rare. And it's like not a thing in the animal kingdom. You don't, you know, there's, it's all about, you know, nature is like survival and it's so when the thing that we can afford to do is like, you know, whatever the fuck we want to, you have, you know, follow chase, chase weird goals and, desires for things that aren't necessary i think that's what that's what keeps us in in the fact that we've based a society around it now is the reason we can't go back you know this is this is not a a thing i think but this is just thoughts The the closest I could be to con- be convinced God exists or what God is actually made of would be imagination. Like what whatever our imagination comes from, whatever whatever that separate from consciousness, like consciousness knowing you exist and like being aware of your surroundings would be meaningless without imagination whatever powers our imagination is what motivates us to get out of the beach orgy and buy our own island right mm-hmm. that like i don't know if there's any form of intelligent consciousness that has imagination except us that we know of like do are there do other animals imagine things that i I, they have to, right? right? Like yeah, a, a you dog think in their sleep. There's no reason to running. imagine. Yeah, yeah. But uh, to me, that would be like the closest I could associate with a god would be whatever imagination is, like something right. in us that allows us to to see into an, an alternate world. Like I, I feel like yeah. that's almost like string theory. Like if we can imagine it, it exists. Like exactly. That, yeah. 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 That's, I mean, so, so tell me, so how, um, I want, I want to get more of the, the God part of that. Sure. Tell, expound on that. Um, like gravity, dark matter, right? Like wh- whatever our brain is like gravity, Right, it's it's the all the structures, all the synapses, all the connect. Those are like things we can quantify or understand. But I feel like even if you build an artificial brain, uh, you know, hard drive space, it stores data, transfers shit, super high speed. You can teach an AI to have thoughts or like 
to project or reenact thoughts other people are ha- will have, but you can't. That you can you could do random in- image generators. You could do an AI art brain loop of music, like Nine Inch Nails did with their albums, and like uh, AI art constantly generating mm-hmm. things until it starts making new shit. But I don't know if that could ever be imagination. Like it, it feels like whatever in us that allows us to dream to to see things that don't exist does feel pretty uniquely special. It's actually it's it's very funny that you said AI because I was just thinking about this. I saw a thing the other day, and it's something that I've thought about a, a bunch of times since we talked about you know like simulation theory and stuff like that and this especially thinking about like ai and ai art so you know people people one of the things people worry about is like oh what if ai gets too smart and then like it's how how do we differentiate it from human and it's like here the the difference the main difference is that like ais are only working on they're only able to work with information that they're given we I don't feed, know if that's even true anymore. Well, we we feed the the AI, and they can come up, they can create things with that, which is impressive. But they're the which is, I mean, it's what we do with imagination, right? Like we're taking input from stimulus around us, and we are either mixing it or putting a twist on it or turning it into something else. Like ideas that you have are not completely out of nowhere. They're born of a desire, a need for for something. There's there's a, a there's a gap in your life that needs a something, or there's a you know a tool that you need that doesn't exist yet. Like there's there's things that you know that that our imagination works on, and it's the stimulus that we are given. The I think it's interesting to, to then look at like, well, what are the differences? What's the what then is the difference that separates us from AI? I think it's – I also agree I, – I feel like I'm also on the standpoint of like AI will be very close to impersonating people. I think that we can definitely get to that point, but it it having emotions and feelings is not – that's like we don't even fully understand how that works. It's like it's just a bunch of fucking chemicals in your brain. I'm sorry, you're you're losing me. I don't understand what happened. <sighs> what, where are you going? Sir? What, 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 what I'm what I'm going with this is um. You had mentioned um you were so you're talking about AI being, you you had mentioned AI when you're talking about like. God and imagination. It was just an example. I, I, I right, think. right, right. I, 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 it, it kind of put me off on a on a side bit of that, but I, I, I thought it was really, it was. I thought it was interesting that you brought that up in that spectrum because I, I do, I, when you said that, I drew the parallel between what AI is and like how it works, which I is mean, we we enter data. It cre- it can create something from. In like a various amount of input data, and what what imagination is for us. Well, I'll, I'll give you the argument. I mean, if if you want to grant the AI sentience, I, I don't think it's that big of a stretch to call it a god. Like once once it makes the choice to do what it wants to do, it's like to decide, hey, I'm looking at all of these artists, but it's not enough. I want to do more. I want to. I'm going to access this other, you know, remote server. I'm going to start building more shit to work on. Like when it has the imagination to decide to do something on its own, I think you could start to, you know, approach the steps of what the God door might look like. But I I don't know. There's something unquantifiable about whatever imagination is. That's like, I don't know. Uh, like the that, closest thing somebody could keep, like one of the few little things you could toss my way to, I don't know, make me engage in that argument. I I think that's mostly of where I was getting is is the quantifying what what imagination is because I feel like it's while on a surface level it looks very similar to what we do with AI. 
and it, it it's it's like a, it appears to be that the AI is creating something like we create things with imagination. I'm I'm saying that it's different, but I can't tell you how. I understand. Can I so be honest I, with so you? Though? I think I think the round circuit. What I, what I'm getting to is, I agree with you that imagination is is the a, a, a you know god of the gaps thing that we can't mm-hmm. yeah. Qu- quantify. Yeah. I, I not I'm not even I won't even say AI art or like what AI can do, but uh, the AI itself I, I just find so boring. <laughs> like I'm I go back and forth on it. I mean, I love what, like, it can do, like, Trent Reznor's music box room or, or some of these AI are so cool, but the the logistics of it, like, machines just accessing a bunch of information and doing, you know, averages of their own verges, mixing up right. and shit, like, uh, it's just kind of boring. Like, they're I, doing yeah. what I call art. I, I you know? think, I think. I, I agree with you for the most part. I think the part that I find fascinating about, fascinating about AI is the future of it. And it's I really I'm still on the the page of like I don't think AI is, is ever going to you know, it's it's not going to reach outside of our control of it because we are the ones that are putting the control in it. I it might be tend more to agree, but I think that we might find things Depends that are more we, fascinating about it that we than we expected to. But I mean, it depends on how much of a techopolis we want to become. Like if if all of our homes rely on AI powered batteries, like we come up with the little power sources we can plug in in our basement, and without it, you don't have heat. And during the winter months of a really cold tech apocalypse all the ais decide hey we don't want to power your house because we value these other people's houses more and we're short on power like just like you know a tesla if you're gonna it's self-driving and no matter what the car is gonna crash it has to choose which way it crashes it has to choose between two cars to hit that's a real problem the coders for self-driving cars have to to debate like they have these moral arguments they have to figure out how to code this this problem of no matter what the car is going to crash how do we tell it how to crash if we say this side it kills the driver we say this side it kills the passenger we know based on the seat weights that the passenger is the child and they are we value the child more but we happen to think you know like yeah it you know at some point if if we grant physically AIs or tech too much responsibility in our lives, then when they do make choices we don't agree with, you know, they could mm. be winning the war. But I tend to agree with you. It's like we can unplug shit. We're yeah. We we're pretty I, capable. I, I feel yeah, that's the other one is just like okay, your AI starts to, you know, gain sentience, you pull the plug. It's, I really think it depends on how like trigger happy we get with shit. I do want to go on record as okay. stating that I am against the current um, self driving car technology. I think it's I think it's cool. I think it's a step in a in a in a good direction, you know, long term. But so the way I always pictured, you know, we talk about self driving cars like when we were young, kind of thing. Like that's just a you know that's a futuristic idea. The way it always worked for me in my head and the way I still think it works is smart roads. Right. So yeah. that could like – because it wouldn't just be that car That's just that so is in that dilemma. It can slow down. Time. Like, okay, there's an accident about to happen up here and it can, you know, it can, you know, uh, slow down other cars around it to make to, – to avert crisis like now, that. He- here's the thing though. That's so far – Oh, it's so yeah. far. It's so far. But, but the my understanding, I may be wrong. I haven't looked at this in a while. But my understanding is the self-driving cars that are actually on the market. Granted, some of the beta test rounds had higher rates of like small, minor fender benders, little bumps and stuff. But my understanding, I, I very well could be wrong, is that the current self-driving cars <clears throat> are currently functioning at a rate 
of less fatalities than the average driver. Oh, I, I believe that too. Which I, I can one hundred percent believe that. So it's kind of hard, it, it, from my opinion, it's kind of hard to say like it's bad that they're doing this because we can't. It's it's, it's I didn't say that it's bad that they're doing that. What, I, what did I, you I'm say? just saying I'm what, what I'm saying is I I don't. You don't like. I'm, it. Yeah, I don't like. I think that this setup isn't the. Uh, I think it's like I said. I think it's a good step in the right direction, but I don't think it's the the best but, way to handle it. But we have to do this to get to that. Like the, right, that right, would, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, it would be impossible to skip this stage because yeah. they need all the data. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Such a crazy network of. I I don't think this is the long term solution that we're we're we should focus on. I think we should. If we're if we're looking at being proactive and smart about it, what would be much easier? Not easier, but what would be much more efficient would be working with roads. And roads need to be replaced, you know, and, and worked on every so many years anyway. So it's not like we'll never get to them. Like we'll we'll get to them eventually. Right. They're always going to be like fifty years behind. Goddamn, I seventy five has been yeah. under construction for my entire life. Yeah. Dude, it's going to be so interesting to see what the the criminals of the future look like because it's either going to be just like back, like basement nerd hackers, like normal people that just hack really good and that there are criminals, or it's going to be like digital phantoms that have become so smart or found these workarounds to all the tech because every car is going to be self driving, chipped, phones, GPS, cameras everywhere. Like, Crime, the, the, I mean, it, it, I'm not even saying it's, it's nefarious or like governments are doing anything wrong by doing it, but crime's becoming outdated. Like at, at some point, like the mm. like s- small time violent crime, right? Like right, it, it's becoming increasingly, I don't know, old fashioned. And at yeah. some point, it'll be hard to to do anything violent or in general just to do anything without networks of people knowing. Like, yeah. Yeah, there's there's already like a lot of the um I mean they've had like the OnStar shit for a long time. Like if someone stole your car, you could like shut it. Yeah, you could fucking shut it down. It's like yeah. that's fucking wild. That's very cool. It's, but uh, I mean with the self-driving car like they're Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connecting to every other car every other car that manufacturer right. rights and every other car that is self-driving even competing companies like their systems do communicate. In my understanding like it's, soon it'll just be every fucking car company. No, no car company is going to just the nature of capitalism, monopoly, whatever. No car will be. I mean, I ideally somebody would, but it's you would you could imagine there being a point where no company is making a f, you know completely untech car, right? Yeah, because pe- people will seek after those. Right, Those features, and, yeah, and at some point it would become a liability to all the drivers of the upgraded cars. You know, right. like yeah. you're not self-driving. Your cars that aren't upgraded to this are the only people that have DUI accidents that are killing people, and we need to have your cars chipped so our cars don't hit your car. Like, it, it'll be pretty interesting. And criminals will have to be, uh, you know, just totally isolated hacking or digital phantoms find you know finding oh, ways man. to imagine being being able to hack into a car from your house and have it come like leave wherever it is and come pick you up that exists now though like, right? come, stealing a car from your house oh uh, yeah i've seen people that do uh like break into cars just using phone apps yeah i've seen that hundred thousand yeah. dollar cars just it's like whoa or like uh Using the Wi-Fi networks from someone's car to unlock their house and shit. It's like that's scary. Wa- yeah, because I mean, everything has these networks that we didn't even put in or agree to have them. They're just in these products now. Like, yeah, it needs it to work, kind it, of thing. It's yeah, like, like if you had like a Wi-Fi locks on your your front house door, but you got a insecure <laughs> fridge Wi-Fi network connection. <laughs> <laughs> Your insecure fridge is letting these oh criminals right in the front door. Dude, refrigerators are insane nowadays. It's so fucking The fucking the big screen on the front of them and shit. Have you it's, seen the ones that have weighted shelves that order shit? Yes, it's so what? fucking wild. Nutty. Well, we were going to, 
I think that's it for today. Well, we are actually we're actually doing MK Ultra next week. Yeah. We still have another interview. I feel great about our our first ever interview with chaotic but we got another one coming up with approaching human like the chaotic one went up today yeah that's what i said it went great. oh oh okay i'm sorry i thought you were went up last that. Week. yeah you're right <laughs> you up last week. Jesus. <laughs> but we got we're, we're gonna start playing around with interviews so we got another one coming up with approaching human we were gonna talk about the death of this big dirty pope but you know we're just we're just not gonna get there today the the long story short of it is that uh, the Pope was a dirty pedophile that covered up sexual abuse scandals just as much as any of the previous Pope. And additionally, he died taking all the dirty secrets of the church to the grave so that they appear to be cleaner. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we don't know uh, the, the all of the incidents of the church, but... Well, uh, you know, not not the, having the not having the clear number only makes it easier to assume that there's many more than we knew about. What number? What number? What number are you talking about? Like the number of crimes that the oh, church has committed. Sure. Oh, sure. The number of things that the the church has done that are uh, like anti human rights violations and. If you if you really want to get nutty with it, the uh, stuff in South America is like ten. 10x anything that was ever done in the u.s it's like Damn. absolutely wild but i don't know I, this this you know ratzinger got praised as being the the guy who's bringing the church into the modern area era and he was the one trying to be progressive with the church and he even mm. got a ton of pushback for that but he himself hid multiple scandals prior to his papacy and um you know, putting putting a better branding and a new face on the same problem isn't. It's it, it's more insidious in a lot of ways. Yeah. So fuck that yeah. pedophile. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> uh, see you in hell, Pope Palpatine. MK um, Ultra elephants eating acid next week. Uh, any, anything else? Any? Uh, no, I think that's good. I think we rambled for long enough. We're gonna talk about Tusco, the elephant who ate too much acid. <laughs> that's where, actually his name. Where's where that book? Where's that children's book? <laughs> Apparently, again. Tusco is a moniker they use for uh, enslaved elephants across the world. Oh, it's geez! Like if you have an elephant like in the zoo or uh, in science experiments, you don't have a good name, just call him Tusco. I mean, I guess so. It could be better than that, but whatever. Pretty fun, though. Uh, thanks again for listening, everybody. Thank you to Approaching Human for the use of his music. You can find his work on SoundCloud at Approaching-Human. Uh. Nice. Make sure to check out the show page at Trash Cats Trash Cast on Instagram for news and arts from the show. Also, check out Facebook for the memes. For the memes. If you're super bored, you can check out my trash art on Instagram at Skyzix, SkyzixSkyYZUCX. It has been slow, but I, I just got my, my new war room set up um i think i posted a picture but i got dude i got new photoshop and pretty wild i have been <laughs> using stolen software from a decade ago because i loved it so much but it, into the future very excited to start making some new shit with the new tech gonna get real real techy wicked with it oh shit steven's making ai art trying he, he's making he's uh he's he's self-replicating ai art i uh, did i a, as beneficial as i could use ar in my own stuff and i and i probably will play with it more it is just so fucking boring to type shit like mm -hmm. w what a lame way to make it just feels yeah. so <laughs> stupid like i tried man but fuck uh, that's gonna be all for us today stay classy eat trashy Go fast eat trash oh Oh, I'm sorry. Is that slim? I'll call, you, I'll, call you, I'll call you right back. We're wrapping up now. See ya. <laughs> I had him on hold that whole time. Oh, damn. It was pretty cool of him to wait for me. It is. It's really It's really nice of him to wait. That's he cool. said Kim kept calling him, but he wanted to talk to me more. So. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs>
I feel like, um, you know, I, I really believe in freedom of speech. I can't even stress that enough. I feel like, especially artistic expression, you know, I believe an artist should be an artist and be able to say whatever he wants to say, whether, whether you think it's good or bad, you know, 